All right. Uh, good morning, everyone on the East Coast. Also, good morning to those of you on the West Coast. I'm your host, Brandon Troy, host and co-creator of Movers and Shakers Unlimited. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. If you saw any of our recent uh, promo posts that we've uh, had up this morning, we do have a special guest with us. Uh, give me one moment while I introduce someone. They are um, a part. They had recently had their uh, film feature as a selection of the 2020 Virginia Film Festival. So one second while I introduce them. All right, so without further ado, I want to introduce the writer and director of the selection, The Outside Story, Casimir Noskowski. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, first off, uh, um, how how are you? I know um, you know a lot of things have have happened in the last couple of weeks. I know that's an yeah. understatement. So yeah. uh, how have you been? Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. That's it's true. It is kind of hard. I feel like you got to do like the daily check in where you're like, wait, okay, do I have a grip on do I have a grip on reality today, or do I am I overwhelmed? Okay, no, it's an overwhelmed day. Okay, I'm just I'm going back to bed. That's it. So, uh, but no, I'm all right. You know, I'm I'm hanging in there, and uh, I am. Uh, feeling good-ish about our democracy. So, you know, see what happens with that and, you know, take it from there. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, hopping right into uh, the film, as I said, mm -hmm. it was uh, now that the dust has settled, so to speak, a um, couple of weeks out from uh, Virginia Film Festival mm -hmm. and having, you know, your film feature as a selection, the outside stories. Uh, can you talk a bit about, you know, this film and, and uh, what the inspiration for it uh, uh, came, how it came about? Sure, absolutely. Um, let's see. Uh, so my film, The Outside Story, stars Brian Tyree Henry, Sonequa Martin-Green, Sunit Damani, Olivia Edward, and a whole ton of other people. And the reason I mentioned these wonderful, fantastic actors is not just because they're so great. They are so great. They are incredible. Uh, they're the reason the film exists. Um, but also, I think, you know, in a lot of ways, my inspiration for making The Outside Story was to create a kind of platform for great actors. Like, what's a story? What's an idea? What's a landscape I can do um, that I can make that's makeable that basically gives actors a lot of room, my favorite actors, a lot of room to play? And, you know, I just... Sometimes you have those ideas where they're like too big. Okay, there's a car crash. There's a, you know, an alien ship. There's a whatever. And then sometimes, you know, and then you start thinking, well, what would it be like if it was the opposite? What if it was the smallest idea? What if it was about a guy, a depressed, like heartbroken dude just gets locked out of his apartment and just has to meet his neighbors and that's it. Like just that's the starting point. Can you like build real drama from that? Can you build real conflict? Um, you know, what's it like when that's happened to me as someone who's been locked out many times? I'm not ashamed to say it. Uh, you know, I think it's it's an interesting experience to be disrupted, uh, both being, let's say, being locked out or any number of ways where your routine gets thrown off. And I just thought it'd be really neat to kind of, again, you know, see a great actor, see these people um, have this kind of like a real odyssey, but in a really confined way, like it's on one block, it's on one building, uh, we're solving one small problem, but it's leading to all these other kind of like rich experiences and and meeting all these people. So that was kind of the, I would say that was like my starting point, definitely script wise uh, when I was writing it. Awesome, awesome. And uh, I would say a couple of things to add to that, just to hop off of that. First off, uh, I got a, a great sense of deja vu in watching the film. As someone who edits so much of my <laughs> own content, like it was like, yeah. oh my gosh, you're speaking my <laughs> speaking my language. Uh, right, I get all of that. Um, but also, just to you know, hop off further, what you were saying of mm -hmm. just that idea of for your pr uh, protagonist having something that may seem like, gosh, this is like the worst day ever that could possibly happen at the worst possible time, having mm -hmm. it actually shape into, you know, arguably one of his best days in terms mm -hmm. of of being able to not be closed off, so to speak, and, and to right. actually venture out into the world and, and to learn more um, about, you know, those around him and his surroundings. So can, can you, you know, speak to that and, and also, yeah further speak to just the 
the various characters that he encounters <laughs> if it was inspired by yeah. perhaps, you know, your own experiences of folks that you know. Sure. Sure. No, I mean, um, First, just to go back to the editing thing, I just want to, I didn't even mention that. I mean, the fact is I also edit a lot of my own stuff, a lot of my own content. Uh, I worked for a while as someone who made in memoriam videos for celebrities who hadn't died yet, for uh, movie stars in particular. So I've always kind of thought that was just like the weirdest, most macabre job, especially if you're kind of someone who's like in a rut and then you're obsessing over like, how do I capture someone's like legacy in their life? and uh, and I also just wanted to show some editing timelines. I was like, I feel like, I feel like they're really beautiful. So I wanted to get some some waveforms in there and some uh, some Adobe Premiere, you know, timelines in there. Um, so yeah, so that was one thing. And then, uh, 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 you know, I think with the film, yeah, I think I like how you put it. Like honestly, it starts out, you know. A film is a, ultimately the. I think the films that are that I like the best in a lot of ways are about change. You know, they're about a character changing. I mean, that's. I feel like people get frustrated when a character doesn't change in the course of a movie. So, I think going in, I knew that I wanted this character to have some kind of transformation, but I wanted it to happen in a way that was hopefully kind of organic. That you know, people don't often change in the course of a day, but I do think you can have a revelation and you can have those kind of thinking moments where you're meeting someone, you're talking to them and you're kind of just like putting yourself and maybe in their shoes or maybe you're just kind of seeing yourself through their eyes. And so I feel like those are the moments I was looking for, like where Charles, where Brian Tyree Henry's character, um, you know, would be kind of just like back in his, like kind of have his shell up, be kind of defensive. But then when he meets someone who's kind of open or meets someone who's struggling or meets someone who, you know, like Olivia Edward, who's, you know, she's this little girl who lives above him and she's, you find out she's got this, you know, she's in this kind of abusive parental relationship. And so then all of a sudden your problems that are kind of sent, you know, something about your career and something about, you know, your girlfriend isn't, you know, wasn't perfect enough for you or whatever. Um, start to look like small problems. And so again, the movie is about small problems and it's about kind of the scale of problems in comparison to each other. Um, the actor, the you know, the, the characters that he meets, you know, I think there's some that probably I, I was pulling from some real life places. I, I grew up in New York and I've lived in New York all my life. And so I definitely was drawing on my own experience. I also made a lot of... Um, before I made this, this is my first feature, and before I made this feature, I made a ton of short films and a ton of short documentaries, a lot of which where I was going around the city and kind of, you know, meeting people and talking to people, a lot of man on the street kind of videography. And so I talked to, it just is like, New York is such a, I wanted to, I, I sometimes get frustrated with how New York is portrayed in movies, either too romantically or too kind of like innocently and, too kind of archetypically. And so I definitely, we've got some archetypes in this movie, no doubt, you know, there's definitely a balance of characters, but I was trying to kind of, you know, at least shoot for a kind of more, like a more interesting spectrum of character than I I think I normally see in kind of New York movies. Um, you know, and then, yeah, that was kind of my my main goal. And then I think when you're writing it, you're just thinking about balance. You're like, you know, I wanna have, some people are gonna be kind, Ultimately, it's a movie about kindness, um, but I can't have everyone be nice. I need some assholes in there. So trying to get a few kind of assholes, a few kind of, you know, prickly characters to kind of balance it out and try to have it be, you know, it's a life affirming movie. It's a happy movie. But I do, you know, I do, I did try to make like some people a little grumpy, get some grumps in there, you know, I thought was, I thought was important. So yeah, I'd say that was kind of the, that was kind of how I approached like making all those characters, like balance being the most important thing to me, I think. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And, and you, you touched on this earlier, right at the top in terms of, you know, name dropping, you know, all the incredible folks that you had yeah. with past your ensemble. So are you able to speak to that and, and how that came about? Because as you say, you have some incredible folks that are involved, you know, with this film. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's, it's just, a lot of it's luck, a lot of it is pure luck and gratitude, a lot of it is, I mean, really so much gratitude that these people uh, trusted me, a first timer, uh, is an incredible feeling. I, I hope I did them proud, I hope they're happy with it. 
Um, I would say, you know, we had a great casting director, Stephanie Holbrook. We had great producers, Frank Hall Green, Brian Newman, Joe Stevens. And they were all, you know, some of their, some one of the things that they were really able to do was honestly reach people who were, you know, just again, my favorites. I mean, I'm, I love the show Atlanta and I dared to dream that Brian Tyree Henry might, you know, take a look at this script. I, I honestly, in the beginning, did not think that there was a chance he would do it. Um, but, you know, you just go for it. You just send it out there and you make a little connection. You get a little kind of feedback. Um, Brian and I had a great meeting. We had a great lunch. We talked about the film. We talked about Atlanta. We talked about what he was interested in doing. And I, if anything, I mean, I, I, I'd be curious to hear what he thought, you know, what he was, what was appealing to him about the project. I definitely talked about, you know, my approach to, with actors is I really want them to like make the character their own. Like, honestly, like I'm not someone who's precious about like the language or, um, you know, how, how the character is built. I want the, if I'm, if I'm working with an actor, I want them, I'm, I, I'm working with them because I trust them to make the film their own and make the characters their own. So a lot of times, again, I'm just giving them room. I'm just trying not to get in their way. I'm trying to, if anything, be a guide. If there's like a question of should it be A or should it be B, you know, to offer my opinion. So I don't know, hopefully that was appealing to, to someone like Brian. Um, I think, uh, once Brian Tyree Henry was involved in the film, I have to say I, I can't take a lot of credit for a, a lot of the other actors. I think they were just uh, very excited to work with Brian. I mean, this is really one of like our generation's uh, like truly great, inspiring actors. Someone who has like incredible range, incredible track record, done it in theater, TV, film. Um, and I think that uh, a lot of the other actors were like, oh, Brian Tyree Henry's doing a feature comedy like that's cool. all right wait what character can i play? that's cool you know so I, I think that i think you get one great actor and a lot of times that brings other actors kind of gets them interested so but you know in in terms of me i'm just again i'm reaching out to my favorites you know it's like sunita mani is in like my favorite music video of all time turned down for what sonequa martin green i love her in the walking dead uh i love her on star trek discovery um olivia edward better things you know i mean we're just I mean, we're, again, we're just talking about the, my favorite TV that I'm watching and say, and then calling my casting director and saying, do we have a shot? Is there any chance? And, you know, you get lucky. So there it is. Awesome. Awesome. And, uh, you know, it's always funny to, well, not, it's interesting to get an idea, whether it's, you know, filmmakers, writers, mm -hmm. actors, in a landscape that we're in now and and when they were producing a particular project and and how it can how it unbeknownst to them um crosses over to what what is happening currently uh just yeah. that idea of just yeah. venturing out into the world and being closed off uh so can you <laughs> talk a bit to that and kind of that serendipitous like nature of of mm -hmm. actually having a film that's very prevalent and relevant to right now, even <laughs> unbeknownst to you, uh, in terms of, of uh, uh, what you have had it showing in, in festivals currently. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty wild. I, I don't even know if I've totally like processed it all. Like, I mean, on the first, on the one hand, like six months ago, whenever the pandemic started, you know, we were supposed to premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival, which would have been an amazing place to start the film. Just you know kind of a new York film um and then that got postponed along with basically like the whole all of society and i so at, you know at that point i'm thinking oh the film's not even going to get out there for an indefinite period of time i had no idea but then it's amazing how all these festivals including virginia film festival and so many others that really kind of you know powered through it and i think really understood that what people wanted to do was like see movies get some comfort and so how do you make it available to them? And so I feel, again, just more gratitude that these festivals like really kind of seized the moment, made the best of it, really made the best of it. And so the fact that our film could then go on to play like 20 festivals, 20 uh, and counting um, is, I, again, I'm just, I'm so happy that that could even happen because I really didn't know for sure that people were gonna see it anytime soon. So it feels great that people are seeing it. Uh, it's always sad to not be at not be at festivals. Being there is such a kind of great part of the experience. But I'm again, I'm just happy that people are seeing the film. Um, in terms of the content of the movie, craziness. Like that's it's very 
funny that there's such an echo. Uh, you know, I think in some, the pandemic is such a drag. It's such a bad thing. It's such a negative, I mean, there's there's no really, you know, way to put it. It's just a catastrophe. But I think like in any catastrophe, you look for these like silver linings. And, you know, we have this piece of art that I do, I do think has a kind of like cathartic echo to what the what we're experiencing. And so, you know, we all want to we all want to be inside like Charles wants to be inside. We all want to be inside other people's houses. Charles wants to be inside his own house. Um, but we're all trapped inside uh, our own our own houses. And, you know, I think we're the film in a lot of ways is about like what he's taken for granted. And I know for a fact that with the when the pandemic started, like there's just so many things that I miss that I just took for granted. Just as simple as like, I'm gonna walk down to the store without a mask. I'm just gonna buy some stuff. I'm gonna go sit in this restaurant. And like, I was just thinking today, like, oh, it'd be nice to like go to a cafe and do some writing. Oh, I guess I'll do that in like six months, maybe, you know, like, I just is all these things that are so simple, we took for granted. And the film is really about that, that about Charles appreciating the things that are around him. So, I don't know how that'll play out when the film comes out for real. It's possible that people will be sick of uh, pandemic, you know, parallels, or maybe it'll be it'll it'll connect and people will be like, I, I want that feeling. I know that feeling. So, yeah, it's crazy. I'm still trying to figure out what it what it means for the film, but I'm I'm happy that there's a dialogue between the film and like the world, you know? That's what you, when you shoot a film, it takes like two years to make a feature, like a year and a half, a year, two years. So you're always kind of like, fingers crossed that when we appear in the in the world, we'll still be relevant to the world. And so if nothing more, I do think the film is very relevant to the world right now uh, in just some surprising ways. So I'm, I'm, I am happy about that, but I can't wait for this vaccine, let's go. You know, I'll, I'll give the parallels back if we can just wrap up the pandemic, so. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, you know, you have this uh, film going. It, it's been making the you know festival festival circuit, and and uh, I know there are a lot of awesome things uh, that that are on the way. I know you told me about it offline, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. with that being said, with all the stuff that's happening, awesome stuff that's happening with Outside Story. Can you also speak to you know perhaps some other ventures that you have that are uh, currently in development? Sure, sure. I. You know, with the film, that's definitely taking up a lot of my bandwidth because I really want the film to kind of land in the world well. I, you know, with indie films, it's so hard to kind of have them make a splash, you know, make a kind of impact. And so a lot of my energy right now is just trying to kind of um, draw people, like make people aware of the film. So being on a show like this, I, I feel like very grateful. And so thank you for having me on and talking about the film is incredible. Um, so one thing I've been doing along those lines also is on our Instagram, we've I've been doing like a kind of a, an interview series with the cast and crew. These like one minute interviews with like everyone who worked on the film, and I I'm really hoping I can actually get through like a vast majority because it's amazing to me how many people work on a feature. It's just like wild that at one you know at some point probably a hundred people were working on this film, and I really want to kind of acknowledge like the all the work that they did. So right now I've made it to number twenty. So I still got I still got some ways to go, but it's been fun really seeing a really interesting spectrum of like actor and crew. And so that's on our Instagram page. Um, and so that that's the film. And then the film is probably going to come out in the first half of 2021. So definitely just, again, trying to make people aware of it and get people to spread the word. Um, and then in other in other things, the main project, I've got a few projects going. One is I it's interesting, you know making this film was like such a gratifying experience. Um, so I want to get right back out there and just be directing more. I loved the production part of it. I love working with actors. I love being on set. So I'm really just kind of gunning for another opportunity to kind of direct again. I think you learn so much making one. I honestly feel like I learned so much making this feature. Um, and I'm just like, I want to get out there and kind of like apply all those lessons to the next project. So for me, I am writing um, a few, I'm writing a film, I'm writing a horror film right now um, because even though I'm not a horror guy, I just feel like I keep, I don't know if it's the horror of like, the world, but I've just got some good horror inspiration. And I feel like, so I have a horror script I'm working on. Um, 
and then I'm working on an episodic. It actually was a feature about a mother son metal band. Um, but I, I'm turning it into an episodic series right now with my co-writer and uh, it's called Metal Mother and I'm hoping to have a pilot kind of ready to go and that that would be a really delicious kind of next thing to shoot just because it takes place in upstate New York. I like I always like kind of doing different stuff than my last thing. So if this was a city movie I just did, I think it'd be really neat to do kind of an upstate film, a music film, uh, a music show I think would be really kind of fascinating. So. Um, so those are kind of my big writing projects. Uh, and then honestly, I never thought I would say this, but no, actually, let me rephrase that because I, I, I could see it happening, but um, I'm really interested in directing something that someone else wrote because it was so interesting working on this film. I directed something that I wrote. It was, which had its own, like there was a really nice level of like control to the kind of the piece that you're making, but it's also it's like so exhausting. Because every day you gotta, there's writing that has to happen. You're like, oh wait, we can't get that location. Got to go home for your like five hour turnaround and you know write something. So honestly, I'm excited to direct something where I can just like focus on the directing and work with a have a really nice collaboration with another writer. And I was always interested in that, but I don't know if I was really emphasizing it. And I it's now it's something I'm so I'm kind of looking at other scripts um, and trying to kind of figure out if there's some way to do something like that would be great. Cool, cool. Well, awesome, man. Well, Casimir, um, again, man, thank you so much for hopping on, uh, talking about the outside story. Before I let you go, I know you touched on it just now, but uh, can you tell folks where they can find you? Absolutely. So um, our Inst we have an Instagram and we have Facebook for the film. Um, those are probably the easiest. So Instagram.com slash The Outside Story and Facebook.com Outside Story Movie. But if you just search The Outside Story, they'll show up. And then our website is the outside story movie.com. Um, so that's got kind of like if you're looking for other screenings and when we come out, it'll have like theaters, if theaters are a thing or streaming or whatever. So all of those things. Um, and uh, and then you can find me by searching my uniquely spelled name, which has like all the letters of the alphabet. So um, I've got a website and all that good stuff. So, yeah, Brandon, thanks so much for having me on. This was really fun. Absolutely. Uh, so there you guys have it. Again, those of you watching, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm your host, Brandon Troy, host and co-creator of Movies and Shakers Unlimited. You can find us on Facebook, which you are uh, streaming now. However, we also uh, do uh, encore episodes on YouTube. You can find us on Twitter at Move and Shake UNLTD, on Instagram at Movers Shakers Unlimited. And of course, you can find me, Brandon Troy ENT, on Twitter and Brandon Troy underscore ENT on Instagram. Uh, thanks again so much for watching. Be safe out there, everyone, and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.